Now, let's turn to what we call the Southern Campaign. Cornwallis called it his great campaign, his grand strategy. February, beginning in February 18, excuse me, 1780. There hadn't been any, much of any military activity along the coast in the South uh, between 76 and 78. But English politics intervened. There was growing opposition to the war in Parliament. The government of Lord North needed a big victory for political reasons. Why the Southern colonies? Well, first of all, King George was convinced that there were lots of loyalists in the South. His royal governors had told him so. All they needed was for the British to land troops and these thousands of loyalists would come out of the woods and join His Majesty's uh, army. Also, the southern coastline made it easy to use the Royal Navy in support of military operations, and that's, that's a pretty key point. And if you looked at the southern colonies within the empire economically, in terms of trade, the southern colonies were the most important. By 1770, Little South Carolina, one of the smaller of the 13 colonies, amounted or accounted for 29% of the value of trade within the empire from the 13 North American colonies. You add in the other colonies from the south, and you can see why they're looking at that area. It's important to get the southern colonies back. In fact, economic historians have determined that the three richest areas of British North America in 1774 were located, all located in the south, South Carolina, Maryland, and Virginia. The English generals over here, Clinton and Cornwallis, bought into the plan, and their plan had stages. And they actually did, Cornwallis really did put together a plan with he and Clinton. Well, they argue who he's actually did it. It depends upon whether it succeeded or not. <laughs> if it failed, the other one said it was their idea uh, on a particular part of it. The first plan was to take Savannah, then the interior of that colony, and establish royal government. The British Army would then move northward and roll up the remaining southern colonies Along the way, as the king expected, those loyalists would rise up and return royal governments to South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. And then the war would be over. The Americans would sue for peace. Well, the British plan began in Savannah in 1778, and it began brilliantly for the British. In November, they landed on the Georgia coast and greatly outnumbering the small American army, overwhelmed the Patriots completely. And what little opposition to the British remained in places like Ebenezer and Augusta in the interior were easily brushed aside. The royal governor returned and was reinstalled. Once again, royal government, Georgia was a colony in the British Empire. Part one of the plan had gone exactly as it was supposed to do. And a military gentleman, I can tell you, ladies, that's very rare when things go exactly the way you expect them to. Well, besides the fact that it went through the British wanted it to do, all of a sudden the Continental Congress realized they had a problem. They hadn't really paid much attention to the Southern Theater up to this point. They think we need a new commander. They send in General Benjamin Lincoln as the new commander of the Continental Forces in the South. Um, and our allies send a fleet which arrives off Charleston in September 1779. And there's a plan to attack Savannah and bring Georgia back into uh, American Patriot hands. But the Allied assault on Savannah is a disaster. Uh, the casualty rate for the Americans is very high when you assault, uh, a frontal assault against a defended position is never a wise idea. Uh, the French, because of the hurricane season, after the failure, pull back to the West Indies. And so the British are left with part one of their plan still in place. Part two is Charleston. 